from there. Okay. Okay, everyone, I'm super pumped to have uh, Deborah Boynton. Now, Deborah, is it doctor or no? No. Okay, so, so uh, Deborah with us from Q Counseling. And for those of you who track anything that what we've been doing with State of the Spark, um, you know that we're supporting in a lot of pragmatic ways. And one of the major ways that is also very pragmatic that we don't always talk about is health, including and especially mental health. A lot of you guys are seeing uh, people do uh, workouts at home, but what you don't hear people often talking about, except playfully, is what they're doing about mental health in this time, not just being locked up in their homes, but facing economic changes and all that stuff. So I reached out to uh, Ms. Deborah here to talk a little bit about what she's talking with clients, uh, what are the pains that they're seeing, and then what are the, some of the things that she's recommending people do to positively channel their energies in a way that uh, could be more helpful for them to endure, but also maybe come out ahead once we all are kind of trying to get back to business as normal. So I'm going to actually ask Ms. Deborah to tell us a little bit about Q Counseling and where that came from, and, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of this stuff. So, so Deborah, tell us about Q. Where are you guys coming from, and how's business right now? Um, thank you for asking. Um, Q is going very well. Um, actually, business is booming. I, I hate to say that right now with sure. everything that's um, but uh, Q kind of came out of a, a place for um, us to just kind of help people in the community, reach them. It, it, the Q, C-U-E means just a hint. Sometimes people just need a game plan. They just need to get a, 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 an idea, you know, and wow. then they can, it's, um, it's just, it, it could be anything from, I think on our website, you can see mentorship, things like that, just a little direction. And so we've been well received in the community and uh, we've got myself working there as a registered intern because um, I still have two more years. I will effectively, I probably, time I've spent to get this master's level uh, counseling, I would have been a doctor. <laughs> yeah. um, it takes eight years. So um, we've got two licensed mental health counselors who yep. work in the office as well. They've got experience ranging between six and, and nine years. So we typically deal with different areas um they deal with anxiety they deal with uh, we have a couple with autism we have a couple people um you know that that specialize in trauma uh myself being one of them um and so what we're finding i think in the community right now is that people are in a situation of the unknown yes so most people are affected by the lack of their expectations not being met in some way and so right now they feel that their expectations of where they should be today what they want to be doing today things like that are just not coming to fruition for them and so it builds up a certain amount of frustration mm. now, and there's not and there's not a light at the end of the tunnel that's like, correct. like with her i was just talking to somebody about hurricanes and when you get a hurricane there's a lot of anxiety building up but once you go outside after the hurricane, it's like, well, let's do some cleanup, get the power back on, and we're getting back to work. But this is all new. That's it. When you get a plan, you know, you can do anything. And, and we always look to somebody who, who has the plan. Mm -hmm. And if you're a leader, then that, you know, puts an extra pressure on you. And so sometimes people agree with you. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes that even builds more anxiety, which we're seeing, I think, right now as well. But mm -hmm. not either way, and, and, and it doesn't matter who, who uh, you know, which side of the street you're on, the end result is we all want to get a plan and we want to yes. know. And living in an area with distress tolerance, and I say that tongue in cheek because distress and tolerance don't really go well together in the real world, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But learning how to tolerate a certain amount of distress takes skills. Mm. And so we're teaching people a few of the skills, whether it's distress tolerance skills, which, you know, could just be learning how to sit still, be quiet, think about it, you know, casually do fact checking, or we're teaching people how to cope with stress and anxiety through, you know, a lot of people are walking outside right now. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of walkers. Have you driven by Lake Collinsworth at all? I, we were, we were just over at Lake Collinsworth and we saw tremendous people outside who I don't know when the last time they were out there walking. <laughs> if ever, if ever. Right. But you talk yeah. about this, you talk about yeah. distress tolerance as a skill. And I generalize this for myself as mere adaptability. And I was raised in, and I encountered a lot of adverse circumstances early on. 
And, you know, I tell my wife, dang, I was made for this. And hey, can't people just be adaptable? And it's like, no, like that, that, that comes with, I guess you're saying you can develop some of these skills is what you're saying. Absolutely. I mean, really? nothing in really certain. I think that you and I and other people go along in this world thinking we've got a plan. And there's very few people who run into the where, you know, their plan doesn't go well. So let's just say mm -hmm. very few people get diagnosed with cancer comp yeah. compared to the general population, right? So mm -hmm. very few people encounter an automobile accident on any given day. But whenever they, they do experience it, realizing that their reaction to that can be one way or another. Mm. So, I mean, the, nothing's going to change the fact they have a car accident or no, nothing's going to change the fact that we're kind of shut-ins right now or really just kind of, I guess, kind of um, in different areas uh, at, at the same time. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean we're not here. It doesn't mm. mean that these things aren't real. So mm. being able to fact check, being able to um, understand that you can experience something, the same exact thing multiple ways. It doesn't yes. have gray, white and black go together as plaid. You don't have to mm -hmm. remove one thing in order to have uh, both of them, mm -hmm. right? You can have them together. And that is the most important thing. So you, if you can learn how to add white and black and make plaid, then <laughs> you're, you're golden. And, and, and you can, you can, you can do that. Mm. Well, and, and you do see people grasping at like um, a sense of control. Like I know for me, when I dealt with depression issues early on, uh, I mean, way early on when I was younger, I found out through my personal study that this might be correlated to my sense of control. And like you're saying, like the ambiguity of the future, I can't make a plan. And so then I, I stumbled into, and I feel very fortunate now in hindsight that I stumbled into not just a plan, which most people go with, you know, and like we're seeing a lot of political talk and we're not talking about politics, but they're gravitating towards the political party or whichever political party seems to have the best plan. Then they grip it with their teeth and, and you're seeing a lot of this divisiveness uh, and not just about politics. They're like staying inside, going outdoors. These topics seem to be super accentuated and hot. And I think that's coming from this sense of, well, I don't have another piece of control. And if I just jumped onto this bandwagon, I might get a sense of control quicker. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, actually, I can imagine that a lot of people are, um, if they can, if they can tell you and their neighbor and themselves what to do, um, yeah. then it's all going to be okay because it's going to be okay, right? Yeah. It's be, they tell themselves that over and over again. If you just do this, this, and this, it's going to be okay. Then at some point, um, you know, when they can't manage that. And, and get other people to cons to buy into what their their consolation prize is to themselves. Yeah, it, a certain amount of, of of problems for them, and and it will you know it, it could be ranging from stress. It could be ranging uh, to just acting out. It could be a physical uh, manifestation. Mm -hmm. People's blood pressures are going up. I'll, I'll tell you something right now that I'm really struggling with in my area, and in, in, in that very few people are talking about. There's a, a, an increase in child abuse right now. In child what? In child abuse. And, and really? Child, absolutely. When you lock a kid in a house with a parent, you know, whose job is questionable at best, um, you know, they, they don't know where they're going to get their next paycheck from or, or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, then, it, and that could be a real problem or that could be an imagined problem. Wow. Those people are reactionary. You see them on Facebook inappropriately commenting. You see them on the, you know, the, the corner saying, you know, get back inside your house. Those yeah. same people are the ones who are, are more than likely going to get running into their house. And whenever their child steps out of line, because the whole world is out of line, then they're going to have a problem with their child. So it's like, it's, it's, it's there. Like I've heard someone say, you know, this particular crisis is not making you this way. It's revealing how you've always been, and and like creating pressure, and people yeah. are just acting out. It's people's coping skills, you know, mm. it's, it's the way that they actually handle everyday life normally. Um, it can be it's magnified. Mm -hmm. And so, I whenever we do fact check, you know, like I say, it can be real or imagined. 
So mm -hmm. you feel as if this could be your last paycheck because you know the pandemic is coming or the pandemic is here, but is it really your, your last paycheck? And so we just kind of mm -hmm. have to talk people through what's reality, what's real, what's mm -hmm. tangible, what's happened, and, and not think so much about what's going on futuristically. And, and, and although we'd like to have a plan, sometimes we get a flat tire and we have to pull over and we have to deal with that and then we can get back on with our plan. Mm. And, so, and, and, that's, and that alludes to this idea that it's not just about having a plan, it's about having the, I mean, it is, like that's what we need to get to to feel a sense of control. It's about having the tools oh, to yeah. shift plans and new information. That's correct. And a lot of people, a lot of people um, are not really uh, prepared for challenges. I mean, they've never really had any to, to, um, to, to deal with. I mean, unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes adversity builds resilience, as you probably well know, based on, mm -hmm. on what you said, you know, that you faced growing up. I think I, I just read an um, article from a gentleman down um, in Miami. Uh, he's he's a, a basketball player. He, he's, he was kind of sounding off about, this isn't your spring break. This isn't your beat. You know, <laughs> this, this is my hometown where we mm -hmm. have people who are vulnerable right here. Mm -hmm. And he's real. That's whenever you grow up eating a box of raisins for dinner. Um, as a man. <laughs> You know what I mean? His article yeah. was like, wow, man, you think your spring break is screwed up and that's a problem for you. But let me just tell you about my grandma living a block away and they got real problems. So yeah. And, and, and so I guess it, instead of one upping, you know, that gentleman probably has some really great coping skills because mm. he did so much adversity in childhood. Things don't happen the way that Cinderella story turned out, you know, for him. Things don't happen for the average person that way. Mm. And so with each progression and, and step in adversity, you gain these skills. Yeah. So the newer, younger crowd are probably less prepared unless they you know, face tremendous adversity growing up, or if, you know, you've been through a divorce, you, you know, you, you've got all these other problems, maybe you're 40 or 50, some people will learn as a progression of just time and life events, mm -hmm. or you could be someone who just has some control issues who needs to learn how to ratchet those down just a little bit. And so, <laughs> ratchet them down. Yep. You know, and, and there are a few that are right now, it's coming out. Yes. And so what are, what are the top three to five? You, you rattled some of them off, but I'd like to zero back on them. But what are some of the skills for uh, helping people de-stress? You mentioned fact check several times. What are some of the other skills you try to cultivate? Um, we talk to people about breathing. Grant, if I could tell people about one thing on this entire video, I would want yeah. to, to do controlled and deliberate breathing mm. because anxiety usually gets shallow breathing mm. the average person probably you know has a has a rapid breath rate whenever you get exhilarated you know either by you know by chemicals or or by actual physical stress mm. you breathe differently you rapidly and shallow mm. if you can just set a timer on your apple watch or on your phone or whatever it is, you know, device that you use and that says breathe. That's why the watch is so, you know, it tells you to breathe. It's really effective. Yeah. And whenever it tells you to breathe, I want you, you know, to, to do something like, like this very exaggerated yoga deep, you know, get your mm. belly out there expanded, get your lungs filled and oxygenate your brain. <laughs> to do that about good 10 times an hour right now during these stressful times, I would recommend, you know, it become a habit. And mm -hmm. if you can do that, that regulates blood pressure. You can control heart rate. You can control stress levels. There's a lot of things you can do. And during the time you're doing that breathing, you can also take that time to just stop and think only about the breathing, which gives your mm -hmm. brain a break, which gives you a, 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 an actual chemical response. Uh, even greater in the brain. So, wow. okay. So breathing, that's huge. That to me is huge. Mm. I mean, if you're in the middle of a panic attack, the very first thing they do, you know, you see them on the movies, put the bag over their mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So control your breathing. Okay. And then I would encourage people, I know we're going down to the stores and we've got some problems with, with food hoarding or food needing. I, I, I don't know. And I, and I don't want to judge. 
Mm -hmm. But I encourage people to understand um, and learn. I mean, take this time right now to learn about processed sugars and how it, it affects your brain and mm. how it affects the neurochemical transmission in the brain. Um, maybe look at this as an opportunity to change. You know, I always need to change the way I eat. Yeah. Um, might be the time to fuel your body as well as your brain. Um, mm. and, and, you know, I, I'm a big proponent for taking um, – Vitamins, you know, it's not just yes. vitamin C that you need. Mm. Vitamin D, because we spend a lot of time inside. Mm. Fluorescent flickering lights, that deals with how, you know, your brain processes things too. So I don't know, you just, whatever you can do to mm. um, eliminate the other things that you can control, the yes. stress that you can control, the easier it is to go with the flow on the stressors you can't control. Yes. Yeah. So. And you know, sometimes that sounds old hat. Like, you know, like okay. we have, we have um, a group, like, I don't know if you know anything about State of the Spark, but we have this thing called the Total Life Experience. And we believe mm -hmm. people feel good when they're level seven to 10 in fitness and health, healthy, happy relationships, work we enjoy and spirituality. And so we do a lot of meditation teaching. And to those watching, it sounds old hat, but you're talking to a clinic, uh, a, a director and founder of a clinic who is working with people and going, listen, I'm prescribing people to breathe. Mm -hmm. I am prescribing them to eat Brussels sprouts, just one meal. Go back to your pizza and, 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 and ice cream later, but at least start changing. It's just, it's funny that we have to teach people that, but we do, you know? And again, you know, you think about it, here's my son's perspective and he's, he's 31. So he, he goes, whatever happened to the good old days, right? So we had a little lesson. You know, processed foods didn't come around until the 1950s. Um, mm -hmm. kind of. So the generation before me didn't have to really, they didn't have it. Yeah. Then, you know, my mom, we, we had hamburger helper, you know, we had macaroni and cheese, all craft, <laughs> right? Craft yeah. had to be, the, all those things came around. Well, now we're into the next and the next, and, and we're realizing, oh, wow, maybe that wasn't, the best thing to do. Maybe that mm -hmm. isn't for long term. So I, I just think that if we go back to old hat, things that we know worked for people to live yeah. into their hundreds, then it might be some place that we could at least look for some direction. So yes, it, at our at our facility, we do the holistic perspective. That's so great. that let's go to the holistic part of the next thing: exercise. Mm. Everyone's I don't want to go outside. I don't, you know, I don't want to be around people. Jumping jacks in sp in place, mm. um, you know, push ups. There's prisoners more fit than I will ever be as a result of being inside of a cell, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah, so, man. I was doing my seven minute, I've got an app called Seven Minute Workout, and it's legitimately just about seven minutes. And uh, that has helped. I know, I know, and my wife could speak to this my mornings when I'm talking to our team in the morning for a morning huddle. They know, they could tell Grant's worked out this morning just based on my level of clarity. So, um, and energy. It gives yeah. you energy. So, and then the last thing that I would really recommend on, on this brief video is mm -hmm. for people to turn off the rhetoric. I know that mm -hmm. they're getting information, okay? And I, I get that. But at some point, you can get too much information. Yes. And I think that when, you're, when your brain is stimulated so frequently about, and let's just be clear, it doesn't matter what station you're listening to. If they do not want a station, then they are not getting the ratings. So they're going to sensationalize things. They're going to shoot out statistics. And again, that goes back to fact checking. So please make sure you do that. But if you turn it off and just sit in the, in the quietness, a lot of times the brain becomes more quiet. Yes. Yeah. We, uh, we created a landing page for this called the Corona Recovery page, and it's got some, you know, how to work remotely, how to sell online, how to change it, basically how to take agency over your life. And then we, we said this in one of our videos, we said, we know you're getting news from everywhere, but we really believe that you should just be checking and then working at taking control. Because the big feeling that people, like they're feeling now, there's almost this thing where they feel like, okay, if I scroll, I'll get a dopamine hit, and it's the closest I can feel to being in control. And, right. but, but they're feeding the brain bad food, you know, <laughs> and not actually taking control. That, and, oh no. What they're doing is they're giving away control oh. and they, they don't <laughs> quite see it that way. But mm. what they are doing is relinquishing the control. 
So that, you know, I, if I'm within myself and I'm in my space and I, I'm doing my thing and I'm, you know, kind of filtering what I'm taking in and what I'm not taking in, or if I'm just drinking the Kool-Aid as it spills onto me. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that makes sense. If they relinquish control, but still need it, like they back one of these horses and I don't just mean bipartisanship, like anyone who's got a right. position, if they back them, they relinquish control, they're scrolling, they see a new blip. And they have to double down to encourage this person to be the winner because psychologically they've moved the control into that person. And when that person's on top, they think I'm closer to getting back to normal. That is correct. Interesting. That's interesting. So I ask that people just take control back, take quiet time back into their home mm. and take, take the initiative to do what they want their leaders to do. Gotcha. Gotcha. How can people, what's the best way for people to follow what Q Counseling is up to? Uh, social media website, like what are some of your properties that they can check more out about you guys? So what we're doing is updating Facebook constantly with um, the, our providers, what we do, the telehealth sessions. I'm, part, I'm, I'm giving people little clips of what they can do right now for stress management. Um, we're updating our um, website right now. We've got a couple of more blogs that we're going to load and uh, just help people, you know, know what it's like and what to experience or what they might experience whenever they've got a little bit of withdrawal from the public. So really, we're, we're just putting it out on, on, on the, the website and the Facebook page right now. And, and hopefully that will help get people through and understanding that telehealth is available and it mm. might not be mental health. I mean, you don't have to be diagnosed to want to talk to someone. So that I think is, is the first thing that people need to know. And mentorship is, is on our website. And that's something that we're going to expand upon because people just sometimes just need to step back and talk to somebody outside of their normal bubble. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what that's designed to do. Gotcha. So, and for those watching, um, it's Q C U E counseling.com Q counseling.com yes, on Facebook. You can just search Q counseling or Miss Deborah Boyton. And again, like I want to emphasize this point too. You do not have to have a diagnosed issue to reach out for professional help. Sometimes, and this is what their term, just circling back to the beginning, I think you said this, Deborah. Sometimes you just need a cue on which direction to take or which way to start thinking. And so I really encourage you, check out Deborah's team at qcounseling.com. Deborah, thank you for your time. And uh, we'll be checking back just depending on how long this thing goes. And uh, we'll have her back on. So thank you so much and have a great afternoon. Thanks you as well, sir.